Good evening, I'm Shogun Mohammed, and this is the 7 o'clock news. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa was at the forefront to receive the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi and his accompanying delegation upon his arrival at Bahrain International Airport today for an official visit. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa was also at the reception. After a short break at Bahrain International's airport VIP lounge, the guests headed towards Ghaibiyya Palace where an official reception ceremony was held. حرز الشرف سلام جمهورية مصر العربية وسلام مملكة البحرين سلام The national anthem of Bahrain was played
حرس الشرف جهاز التفتيش سيدي His Majesty the King and the President of Egypt inspected the Guards of Honor. A mission of honor was also formed, headed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. Relations between Bahrain and Egypt are in constant growth. The leaders of both countries have reinforced the cooperation between them with milestone visits. Sar Lebrek tells us more in this report. In light of the historically deep-rooted relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Arab Republic of Egypt, emphasis on the cooperation between them has to be illuminated, especially that it spreads into all fields, aiming to improve the lives of both countries' citizens through learning from each other's experiences. Both countries share a similar cultural history, but set in different continents. We have collaboration in most of the fields. If you speak of culture, we have enormous collaboration in this field. And actually, we're working together to present our culture to the world. We're very proud of Bahrain when they actually they hosted the committee of the UNESCO. It was very important for us to present our culture, to present what's happening to our history and heritage. So these are things that we collaborate together in, presenting our culture and presenting our people. When His Majesty visited, Egypt actually. He visited the Asar, he visited the church, he visited everywhere. He was, we felt that he was in direct contact with the Egyptian people. He had been to all places that makes him in touch with the public. When he committed to build educational institutions to make sure that the Azhar that the people learn languages. We are doing, it's a lot, it's a strategy. It was not just a visit. Because if I care that the Azhar develops, how it presents Islam, how it presents the moderation of Islam, the true spirit of the religion, we are, we are doing a lot. And this, there was a lot of backing to Al Azhar, a lot of backing to all religious institutions. And this gives the impression of how we are building our countries. The same applies to the Minister for Foreign Affairs. When he went there, he had a very actually interesting conversation with all the media in Egypt. This is how they come to know not only what Bahrain is all about, what people in Bahrain are all about. We are very impressed by his openness to the world, by his insistence to visit a lot of countries, in have to understand a lot about Africa, to understand a lot about Asia, to understand a lot about places that we have not usually visited. Cooperation in the field of education is limitless between the two countries. This stems from their belief in providing the best possible tools to invest in the mindset of their citizens and the progress of future generations. If we speak of education, our collaboration in this field are just of paramount importance. And what matters to me is that we are starting to develop our educational systems. We are starting to benefit from the experiences of Bahrain. You did achieve a lot in the field of education. And we have been collaborating, but more importantly, we have been learning of your experiences. I meant by maturity in the relationship in the sense that it's not, not only visits, but it's actually understanding your experience and you understanding ours. We have actually initiated a uh, collaboration with a number of international organizations to develop our educational system. We agree with you, with your vision on 2030, that we have to build education, we have to build the human being, we have to build our citizen to make him capable of, face of facing the challenges of the world. We're doing this. We are making this balance between teaching him, educating him, modernizing him, yet maintaining our identity. Because our identity means a lot to our culture, means a lot to our citizen, means a lot to our future. This is Sarah Al-Break reporting for Bahrain International. 
in light of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to fulfill the needs of the citizens and follow up on the efforts of government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa to implement its work program and an implementation of the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa of distributing 5,000 housing units. The Minister of Housing Basim bin Yaqub Al Hamar announced the Ministry's completion of distributing the aforementioned housing units following the distribution of all the completed units in Salman town which was the last project on the distribution plan list. The ministry has stated that the ministry has successfully completed its plan of distributing the units in three months which is in accordance with the schedule. He noted that all the projects included in the plan of distributing 5,000 housing units are part of the program of constructing 25,000 housing units as part of the government action program stemming from the Royal Directive of constructing 40,000 housing units. He asserted that the continuity of constructing and distributing the projects listed in the government action program affirms that the ministry is working steadily to implement its commitments. Information Affairs Minister, head of the Bahrain Institute of Political Development, Ali bin Mohammed al Ramehi, held the deep rooted historic relations between Bahrain and Egypt, lauding the steadily growing ties which are based on mutual respect between the two brotherly leaderships and peoples. In a statement to Middle East News Agency, he described outstanding and strategic relations binding Bahrain and Egypt as a model to emulate for fraternity, political, economic, security, and media partnership. He said Bahraini-Egyptian bilateral relations achieved landmark strides under the wise leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. He commended the pro-Arab firm and honorable stances taken by Egypt, which he described as the bulwark and fortified fortress for the Arab and Islamic nations, stressing its unwavering support to the kingdom and the Arabian Gulf in all international arenas. He stressed Egypt's support to the Palestinian cause and firm stances in defending pan-Arab security, combating terrorism, and rejecting blatant external interference in Arab internal affairs. Ramehi reiterated Bahrain's unwavering support and solidarity with Egypt in combating all forms of violence and terrorism, backing all measures it has undertaken to protect its security and stability, and meeting the aspirations of his brotherly people towards achieving sustainable economic and social development and progress. The advisor of His Majesty the King for Media Affairs, Nabil Hamar, has lauded the continuously growing and revitalized relations between Bahrain and Egypt as a vivid practical example of joint Arab relations and working to promote Arab interests so that the Arab banners do remain hoisted as the loftiest flags of glory and freedom in our Arab sky. These meanings were embodied within the context of Al Hamar's article published in today's Egypt based Al Ahram newspaper, in which he said the Kingdom of Bahrain always amicably and lovingly welcomes our brothers from Egypt. The welcoming article comes in light of the anticipated visit of the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi to the Kingdom. The final evaluation of the government service centers commenced two days ago. The evaluation process is led by the Government Service Center Evaluation Committee, which was set up following the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to enhance the standards and competence of government services. The Chairman of the Government Services Center's Committee and Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohammed Al Qaid, stated that the assessment, which will span over two weeks, will cover over 70 centers across the kingdom through various methods, including field visits, mystery shoppers, and specific QR code evaluation surveys conducted via the National Suggestions and Complaint System application to Wasl. al qaid added that the evaluation process aims at developing the public sector performance, raising customer satisfaction levels through unifying the standards of services delivery, advancing human resources and technical equipment, which would enhance transparency, competitiveness and creativity in line with the government action plan. He shed light on the previous efforts exerted by the committee prior to the final phase of evaluation, adding that in December 2017, the Government Service Center's evaluation booklet was approved, and in January 2018, the committee approved the evaluation plan, along with the general guidelines and field visits. Moreover, in collaboration with Bahrain Institute of Public Administration, a customer service program has been launched to train front desk employees at the various centers. 
The evaluation of the government service centers is based on several mechanisms that include ease of accessibility to the centers, the excellence in service offered, compatibility of the center's environment, smooth management of clients, and focus on the effectiveness of the administration processes applied by the centers, including processing customer feedback. The committee was formed following the issuance of Edict No. 9 of 2017 by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa.